So welcome to everybody. Uh, this is the eighth uh, seminar of the investment uh, sustainable uh, management uh, training program. So this is uh, one of the sessions dedicated to international strategies and uh, how to uh, address this uh, topic into the business ideas that you're developing. Uh, today, we have the, the pleasure to have uh, as you. a speaker. Yes. Sorry. We have as a speaker, uh, Sergio, Sergio Mestre, and he will uh, guide us into, uh, uh, according to his expertise. As you know, uh, the trade, uh, it's one of the relevant topics that you have to consider when analyzing the, the potential market that you can focus uh, to your products or services. So uh, we will have today this, uh, we will have the pleasure to hear Sergio. He's a lawyer from the University of Alicante, and he has a specialization on international trade uh, and uh, EU legislation. He has a, a master's degree as well on the topic. Currently, he's a managing director for Rexport Alevante, and he's developing several strategies for uh, exporting on in companies, several companies. He's a current collaborator from the Spanish Chamber of Commerce, and um, he has developed several methodologies and uh, technical assistance for Expand Digital Program. As well, he's a professor at different business schools, such as ESCI, a higher international trade school in Barcelona, University of Barcelona, uh, the Murcia Business School, and the EOI, the Industrial Organization School in Madrid. So let me give you uh, the floor, Sergio. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for the introduction. Uh, and okay, we can start with the, the presentation, right? Yes, Sergio, the, uh, the agenda for today is that we will have uh, first your presentation, your lecture, and then we will have a discussion, uh, some questions, discussions with uh, Carmen. Uh, from the Chamber of Commerce, and then uh, we will have the, a bit of a interaction with the with the people that are joining today. So the okay. floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Cynthia. And um, first of all, I would like to to thank you, the organization, for for inviting me to to this to this webinar. It's a it's a pleasure to to be here with with you. And we'd also like to, to thank you, uh, all of you, for, for spending some of your time uh, learning uh, some new things about interna internationalization and also, and also uh, internet, okay? So uh, as Cynthia already explained it, uh, you can have a deep information of my, my experience in, in LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is a excellent uh, tool for for many for many people for showing the their expertise and also the the digital brand in across the across the world but but also uh, is uh, an excellent tool for making networking so if you like to to ask me for for a collaboration in linkedin feel free and contact me in the in the link that you can see uh, above okay uh, Apart from what Cinta has explained about the, the information uh, about my, my curriculum, uh, I would like to, to explain a little bit how we are going to, to organize this, this webinar. Okay, first of all, uh, we will uh, start uh, explaining the digital program Expand Digital. Okay, we have collaborated uh, preparing the methodol methodology and also giving technical assistance to the Chamber of Commerce for, of, of Spain. Uh, secondly, we will explain a, a simple methodology, but it's really, really useful uh, to develop international digital strategies. Okay, we are in export, in export, and your company, we are specialized in, in this field, in international digital uh, strategies. Um, we will explain a simple methodology that you can you can apply in your in your daily in your daily work. And I think it's also going to be useful to, to think about how we can use internet in, in our strategies, okay, as a company. And finally, 
And I think this is the most important thing in, in the presentation. I will show some case studies of different companies in the field of cultural uh, industries and also uh, sustainable industries, okay? Uh, Why well, I say this, because I think uh, when you see companies in Spain that has applied this methodology, you could feel a... Uh, you could feel more attractive for, for you to, to think and to implement and to develop an strategy in this in this way, okay? We can talk about big companies, we can talk about big uh, trademarks, but um, we are mainly specialized in small and um, medium enterprises. So it's going to be also useful to, for you to know uh, some case studies of different Spanish companies that has applied this, this methodology in, in, the, in their companies. Okay, so you have... Uh, a short presentation of my bio in LinkedIn, and also you have a, a small presentation of our company, Reexporta. What we do in Reexporta, oh, we have more than 400, I mean, 400 projects uh, during from 2004 approximately, uh, consultancy projects for many, many different companies in many different uh, sectors, in many different fields. Uh, what we have learned in these years, and I think this is one of the main things I would like to, to explain to, to you, is that every company needs a custom-made solution, okay? Even if internet is global, even if internet uh, can be useful to reach international markets, we have to go step by step. We have to address market by market. Internet, I, will, I, I like to, to say internet is global, but the strategies have to be local. Think globally, act locally. Uh, if we have a, a website or we have a, some presence in social media, uh, for example, in English, that doesn't mean that you have a clear strategy for internationalization. Okay, this is the, the, the first thing I, I will uh, remark many, many times that every company is different and we have to make a custom-made solution, a custom-made project for every different company. When uh, I started my professional career, I, I finished a international trade degree in the University of Alicante. Alicante is an, an area from, from Spain. When I finished my, my career in the year 2000, uh, internet was just beginning, so uh, was just a small part in the strategies or in the actions that were developing the different companies in the in the world. Uh, this was around the year 2000. The time had just passed, and uh, after a few years, in 2008, 2009, approximately, internet is a uh, is an essential part of the digital strategy of many companies. Okay, we cannot understand internationalization without internet. Okay, this is what we're going to focus: internationalization. Okay, and also internet. And we are going to explain the methodology and how we have we have collaborated with the the Chamber of Commerce of Spain in developing this this type of program. So. Uh, we have worked with many, many different types of company, companies, small companies, medium companies, and also big size companies. So we can apply, and you can apply this methodology in your companies without any, any problems. Okay, uh, you can also follow us in, in LinkedIn uh, about information. Uh, you, ha you have more details in the LinkedIn profile in, of, of our company, Rexporta. So uh, let's start with a small introduction. You already know about all of these things, but just to have a, a perspective, Google was founded just in 1998, very, very recently, okay? At that time, uh, there was uh, probably no 
digital strategies, digital promotion activities, what uh, was before Google was just a different type of directories, search engines. But in 1998, the, the, the world of digital marketing changes for, for at, at, at all, okay? Was the, the first company that has started developing Google Ads, the, uh, the publicity uh, tool that is issued in Google when you make a, a search. And just in 2004, very, very recently, okay, the, the changes in, in the world of internet, it, they are changing so, 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 so fast. In 2004, uh, you know, that Mark Zuckerberg created a Facebook uh, at the same time as Google developed the, the Gmail, the Gmail activity. Okay, uh, then the Twitter in 2006, uh, 2012, uh, Instagram, Amazon, Microsoft, you know, uh, in these 20, last 20 years, the, the world of internet has changed our life uh, for all, okay? We, we cannot uh, live without, without internet. But what is important is uh, even if you have all the information, if you have these tools, for us, it's more important to think about what you want to do, okay? You have the tools, you have the information, but the strategy, the, the process of thinking about the, the object is what you would like to do. Uh, and also the, the, all the process of measuring all the, all the activities, I think it's, very, it's more, even more important than using the, the tools. Okay, it's just a small perspective of the edge of internet, you know? And also uh, we have a, a strange met, a denomination, different types of, of internet. We have the, the web, 1.0, okay? It was just a, a one direction internet where the companies were just publishing the information in a website and the consumers, the users were reading this information. It was a read-only web. E after a, a few years with the introduction, I have just said that Facebook started in 2004. After a few years, uh, we start, the users, we just, uh, start generating content. Not only the brands, not only the companies were generating the content through the webs, but uh, with the aid of the social networks, we start to generate content. This is very important, okay? Because uh, internet is not just a domain of the brands, it's a free domain of thousands and millions of people when we can collaborate and also we can promote uh, our, our products, okay? And finally, the web 3.0 is the, just, uh, uh, the last type of internet that we are talking about. I, I, I know that we are talking also about web 4.0, but uh, it's, uh, it's just a start to, to define what is web 4.0. But the web 3.0, as you see, the part of the content generated by the final users, it's even bigger than the user published by the companies. It's a more democratic web where the user has the power and where the users start collaborating and start uh, generating uh, content. In this field, in this, uh, that, in this uh, situation that we are right now in the web 3.5, the small companies and also the entrepreneurs like, like, like you have an excellent opportunity to use internet as a way of communication, okay? After this short uh, presentation that you already know about the, the age of internet and how we have changed it, I would will, will like to explain just a little bit the, the span the digital program that we have uh, developed with the, together with, with the Chamber of Commerce of, of Spain. Just to have some ideas, uh, in the year 2022, we have uh, the Chamber of Commerce has developed more than 60, 646 digital strategies program, okay? In just 2022. Uh, this program, as you can see, I will explain just a little bit what is the, the content of this program. And also I will explain what is more interesting, interesting for you, the, the methodology that we apply. It's a program that is uh, prepared to support the Spanish companies in the development of online promotion strategies in international 
markets. We have uh, give technical assistance to the Chamber of Commerce developing this, even I, I know it's, it's in Spanish, but <laughs> we don't have the, the translation in, in English. Uh, in this program, we, we are helping the, the companies to develop a strategy uh, for uh, preparing an international digital plan in one international market. The, the methodology is very, very simple. Okay, we have a one phase of analysis, there's another phase, second phase of objectives and, and strategies, and also a, another a phase, another of implementation of all of this, and also a, a business and business international this digital digital plan. Okay, and once we started the collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce of Spain, it was very important for us that uh, the companies should have a previous international experience. I know that there are some companies, it, it, it also depends on the business model we are, talking, we are talking about. You can have a business, a business model, business to business. You know, uh, it's a business model when a company uh, offers products or services to other, another company, B2B or business to, to business. This uh, program uh, can uh, help this type of companies that are doing international B2B. But also uh, the, the, the Spanded Digital Program helps companies that are uh, working with a B2C digital model. B2C means uh, business to consumer, basically e-commerce. Okay? When we do uh, e-commerce, we can also help the, the companies to, to prepare their strategy for selling through, through an e-commerce platform. So both uh, types of business models, B2B and also uh, B2C uh, models. And I say what is very important for us during this program is that a company that uh, is, uh, is accepted in the expanded digital program ideally, ideally should have a previous international experience. Why I say, that, I say this because if you don't have an international strategy, if you have not previously studied which is your market, which is your uh, final customer, what competitor do you have in that market, what type of logistic are you going to use in that market, if you don't have a previous international strategy, the expanded digital program has no make no sense. Okay, you, you need to have a previous international strategy. Uh, also, the, the Chamber of Commerce of Spain has another program that helps uh, the companies to develop an international strategy. But uh, the digital program especially focus in digital strategies. And as I said before, the digital strategies nowadays and also with the, the COVID situation and this uh, situation, it's a very, very big area, big part of the international plan of many of many companies. Okay, so uh, we help the Chamber of Commerce to develop this, this program with, I said, uh, from 2000 and 2016 to 2022, have helped many, many companies in different sectors with different business models and also in different countries from European countries to South, uh, to Latin, Latin America countries, also to America, UK, and also in the North of, of Africa. We have also collaborated with many, many different, different companies. So we give assistance to the Chamber of Commerce preparing the methodology for this program. And also we, did, we give assistance, technical assistance for developing a, a tool that helps the, all the consultants of the different Chambers of Commerce to uh, to prepare the, all the reports and all of the, the information of this, of this program. We are also helping nowadays this, uh, all of the international uh, promotion uh, workers of different chambers of commerce. If they, of this, all of these people, we are helping them in the development of this, of this program. Okay, so uh, what do we have to do? What do we have done with the expanded digital program? Of what methodology we are uh, working with with them? 
Okay. Do you have any questions about the international expanded digital? No? I think we will talk a little bit after in the questions and answers uh, at the end of the presentation. Okay. But if you have any, any questions, you, we can discuss later. Okay, so uh, we have to make an introduction about internet. We have may explained just a little bit what is the expanded digital program that helps uh, small companies to develop an international digital strategy. And we are going to explain the methodology. Uh, when we talk, about internationalization uh, and internet. If you see this, this map, you can think, oh, it is, it's different, okay? If this, it, the, the focus on, on this map is not in, in Europe. You can see in the left side of the, of the image, you can see Spain and also the Mediterranean, Mediterranean area where we are, we are now. This, that could, could, uh, could be strange for, from our, our point of, of view is a map that is showing the perspective of Asian and North American countries. This is the, the map that they are using normally. So uh, why I am using this Images in the in the presentation because we have to think that the world is very big, and the different strategies, the different cultures, the different uh, clients, the way that they they buy in internet, the way they use internet, the tools, everything is different. Okay, this is what we call a. Uh, in some cases, when we like to sell to the to the world i show to my clients this map i say the world is very big okay so we have to focus we have to focus in one country we have to focus in one type of uh, clients and we have to to make a strategy especially for this country for this uh, product and for this type of of clients okay so it's very important to have a clear methodology it is very important to develop a, an action plan if we would like to implement an international digital strategy. I will show during the presentation, and I think they will share the presentation after we, we, we finish, uh, some uh, useful links where you can start making some, uh, some trials, um, also giving creating some information about the markets where you will like to, to sell. So first of all, uh, the big, the world is very big and we have to focus. We have to develop a strategy and we have to think about what are our objectives and what we would like to, to do in international, international markets. So if the world is so big, if we are in just a far, very, very far away from Latin America, for, for, from also from USA and also for Asia, there's now not impossible to sell in this country. I will show at the end of the presentation in the case studies that are many companies, small companies, that after uh, doing this process of a uh, international strategy reflection, they have think and they have made some actions that they have implemented some uh, actions in these countries and they are currently selling abroad, okay? With tools like YouTube, with LinkedIn, and also with other, with other tools. So after we think about internationalization, we have to develop a plan. Uh, this is very simple. It's a, a plan that you, you can have for, for example, if you are making a business plan, these five uh, steps, I think you, you, you already know. Okay, the, the first step of analysis, okay, we have to identify a, a preliminary analysis of how we are, we are now, okay, which, where are we now? We have to analyze the, the competitors in that country that we have, we would like to, to target. We have to analyze also the, the sector, 
and we have to analyze the, the searches. We are going to, to, to analyze more, uh, more in depth this, this phase, and we are going to show you some different uh, tools that you can already already use. The second, the second uh, step in this strategy, in this plan, is to establish objectives. What do you want to do in internet? Okay. You want to sell directly to final customers. You would like to find distributors. You would like to be known, I mean, recognized as a, an influencer in one sector, in one field. So we have to fix the objectives and also develop some strategies, what, what we are going to do to uh, carry out or to fulfill these objectives in, in internet. The third uh, step is web implementation. I know that you can work in, for example, in social networks without having a, a website. But for us, the key, uh, the key point in the in the action plan should be the web page. Okay, we have a strong. We have to have a strong presence, a web presence, in different languages, in different uh, with different approaches with all the products. And also, we have to, to use different tools as the search engine optimizations, uh, social media, marketplaces, and so on. Okay, so for us, the web implementation should also have to be one of the key points in the development of an international digital, digital plan. And fifth, the, the, the last step in this in this in this plan and for me it's one of the points where many companies fail is the the phase of control and monitoring why is it is because uh, many companies they are focused on selling focus on making contacts focus on making distributions but you have to measure we have to know how far we have reached without objectives, and we have to know if we are developing well our international action plan. So for the management, it's very important to control and to have information, to have data of how well we are performing in this with this with this plan. It's very simple. We will go in deep in the different steps of this digital strategy plan. Um, at the end, we will show you some cases of different companies that are applying this, this methodology. At the end, we can also discuss if you have any uh, questions about the, the methodology and the, and the plan. Okay, first step, analysis. Where are we now? The starting point, the initial situation. What activities are you currently developing in internet? You have a website, you have a blog, you have a presence in social media, you have videos in YouTube or other video platforms. Are you currently making ads in Google? You have to start with a digital analysis of your company. It's very simple, okay? Company initial situations. Then we have to think about the microenvironment. And when we talk about microenvironment, we talk about competitors. We talk about competitors in that market, okay? Uh, the methodology should be uh, developed country by country. As I said, Google Internet is global, but the strategy should be local. So we have to look for the competitors in that country. And we sometimes make uh, some uh, competitive analysis with indicators that could be, for example, the number of uh, web pages that you have. We, have, we can also uh, 
use as in the, an indicator the number of likes or followers that you have in social networks, and you can have as an indicator different type of, of rankings, okay? So we develop a competitor competitive analysis. And also very important, once uh, we have the, our initial situation and also the competitors and the sectors, it's very interesting to develop a SWOT digital analysis. You know what is a SWOT analysis? So we, we will explain just a, a little bit after, but you know the, the parts of a SWOT analysis and what you have to, to consider in, in this analysis. We have also to think about the, the situation of our products or our service in that country. I will explain a very simple methodology to make or make search in the counties that you would like to target. I will, it's a very simple situation, but uh, sorry, it's a very simple uh, methodology of search, but it will help you a lot, okay? Because the, the vision that we have when we are carrying out a, an investigation from internet in our office, is completely different than the real situation in internet in that country. So I will explain four points, four steps to making some uh, quality uh, searches in the destination country of your, of your exports. And finally, we have to think about our customers or a uh, user. If this customer is final customers or is a B2B business model, when we will have to make establish a relationship with uh, importers or distributors or even agents in that in that country. So uh, in the first stage, we have to focus, and you see in the right side in all of these points. For one country, it's very important to focus the strategy in one country for one type of client. It's not the same to sell a wine, for example, in. Poland that to sell wine in the United States. In one country, we can use uh, one approach. We can use uh, agents, distributors, and for example, if we like to sell wine to Poland, maybe it's interesting for uh, it's interesting to uh, create an e-commerce to sell directly to final customers. So all the strategy of the plan. We have to think in these three elements in all the uh, steps of the of the plan: country, client, and also product. These three elements has to be part of the international digital digital plan. Okay, some uh, ideas to develop this this uh, uh, this analysis is uh, you can have uh, quantitative indicators: the page rank, Alexa rank, index pages, e-commerce prices fans, followers, price, likes, etc., and so on. So uh, what we do here in the Spanda Digital Program is we make some graphics or the current situations of our company compared with their competitors in that, in that country. This is a quantitative, quantitative indicators, but there are also qualitative indicators. The difference, quantitative are numbers, qualitative is uh, more subjective, okay? Uh, for example, how well, is your customer focus, the usability of your web, the design of your web, how the website persuade to, to make an action, for example, to develop, a, 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 to download a PDF a catalog, or for example, to, to make a sale or to contact that, that company. How usable is your uh, website? If your website, oriented for sales? Is your website designed for that country? Is your website oriented in the language of that country? So we have to think about uh, what the competitors are doing currently in that, in that field, in that, in that area. And I, I say you, you already know the, the SWOT analysis that we, we are also doing in the, in the Spanda Digital program. The strengths of our company and the weakness, the S and W, they are both part of the internal analysis of the, of the company. And opportunity, opportunities and threats are part of the external 
analysis of the company, competitors and sector. And once we develop the SWOT, we have to make some actions to correct the weakness, to adapt to the threats, maintain the strength or exploit the opportunities. The SWOT, uh, the SWOT tool is very, very, a very, very interesting tool for uh, any kind of business to start thinking, to start developing a strategy about what we have to do. Okay, a uh, uh, correctly done SWOT give, give, for example, to for, for, for us give a lot of information on what we have to do in that uh, market. Okay, so think about the, the SWOT and also about the, the actions that we can do after uh, carrying out this, this type of, of analysis. Okay, we have to think also about the information that we can get from that market in concrete. For example, uh, you can see here, uh, we have developed a gluten-free digital marketing plan for a company, Excel in Europe. We would like to send gluten-free uh, bread in, in, the net, in, in, the, in Holland, okay? So one of the first things that we have to do is what information I can get for gluten-free bread in that country. And for that, we apply a methodology of searches. I will explain also with the, in reality with, with Google and I will show you how to uh, perform these, these searches. First of all, we have to use the ventana of the window, incognito windows. You know, all the browsers have an option to select these incognito windows or private search in, if you're using Firefox. We have to select the Google domain, the correct Google domain. We have to select in search settings, the language and also the country, I will show it to you. And we have to use the current terminology for this product in that country. Okay, let me show you. Okay, let's think that we would like to get some information of bread, for example, in, in Egypt, okay? What we have to do first is to uh, go incognito, private search, or you have it here in Spanish, but you know, in the third, three lines or three points of your uh, browser, you have the option to select Ventana Privada or a private search. Once we are, we are browsing in incognito, we have to select the correct Google, for example, Google uh, Egypt. I think it's google.com.egypt. Okay. So you have here the domain of Google, but I, I can see the information in Spanish. So uh, even if we have the domain, we have to go to the right down uh, configuration options. We set the configuration of search and here we have to select the country. Egypt, I know it's in Spanish, but I have not changed the, <laughs> the language. And now the first, the last point in this methodology is you have to select the language. So three points, Google domain, settings a configuration, search settings in the right part of Google, and also select the right language. When we perform, for example, gluten-free bread, what we see here are the results from that country specifically, okay? So if you use this methodology, you can get a lot of information of the competitors, of prices, of what information we can get of this product in that market. And you have all this information. I know uh, if you are going to make a strategy in, in, in another different countries, you have to 
set up the configuration in that language. Okay, have made in English because it's, I think it's easier for, for, all the, for all the people. So with these four steps, you are going to find a lot of information that is going to help in your international uh, strategy. Okay, you have here the methodology, Google domains, search settings, terminology, and also the advanced search information that, that you have. After we finish the analysis step, the first step, we have to establish, we have to set up objectives. Basically, I think they are not more than, in internet, they are not more than four or five main objectives in, in internet, but the most important ones are to sell, okay? If your focus is to make an e-commerce and direct itself through e-commerce to final customers, our objectives are direct sell. But if your focus is to find distributors, there's no problem at all. The objective is going to be leads, to obtain B2B contacts, to obtain leads. So these are the main two objectives. Uh, first, to sell, if you make uh, making e-commerce, and second, to B2B, to obtain leads, to obtain potential clients, to obtain uh, potential customers, B2B customers for your company. There's the two main objectives. There are other objectives, for example, the brand awareness. Okay, if you want to have some recognizance of your brand in that country, they are also uh, complementary, not excluding objectives. If we are using sell leads, we can also use the objective brand awareness. And the last two objectives that you can see here, point of sales and also self-service, they are not so uh, widespread in the in the international strategies of the, of the companies. Point of sales, if you, if you have a physical point of sales in one country, you can attract the customers to that uh, physical point of sales and sell service. We are talking about more uh, about uh, services. Okay, for example, if you are developing an app or a service that the, the users are, are using in the, in the static. Okay, the most important one, you have to think, what, where do we, what do we want to do? We want to sell? or we want to uh, make contacts with different, with different companies. Uh, you know, also the methodology of smart objectives, how to establish objectives, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and um, time-related. You can apply these smart objectives, uh, uh, this smart objectives points strategy in your definition of objectives, and also preparation of strategies. When we think about internationalization and internet, there are two points that are also very important to, to, to define and to, to think about. First is, you have the second one here, is language or regional strategy in which language are we going to focus our strategy to the final clients? In English, if it's B2B. In French, if we are going to say directly to, to the final clients. I think so. Okay, we, we talk about, I think you, you're going to, to receive the, the slide sets. No, no, no problem. Okay, we uh, have to think about the languages. We have to think about the domain of our website. It's going to be an international domain. It's going to have keywords. We are going to have a use a brand domain and also the hosting. Where we are going to have the hosting of our website in their country and also closer to the final customers. So uh, apart from the general strategy, if we are going to make a website, an e-commerce, landing page, a microsite category, there are three key points, languages, domain, and also hosting. And again, all of this has to be focused in one country and for what type of, of client. Uh, 
I'm going to be fast now with the, this, this part to have some web implementation uh, ideas or recommendations for, for your project, which technology we are going to use, how we are going to focus in the customers, which content management system are we going to use, and also how it's going to be organized or website, which, which architecture are we are going to, to prepare. This, I have some projects with some different companies in Spain that I say, if you have to draw a prototype, a wireframe, which is called technically, we call, we call them wireframes. If you have to draw a wireframe, I don't care if you make in a paper or if in a PowerPoint template, but you have to decide, you have to think what, what is going to be the structure of your website. I repeat, even in paper, but you have to do it. If you, we just go to one company and say, I want a web page, they are going to make a standard web page. You have to decide, you have to think about the structure of your website, which type of uh, products, the organization, uh, how it's going to be the home page, which uh, uh, contact information are we going to do? You have to think about strategy, how to develop a wireframe. You have here one mock flow free tool to develop and to create different prototypes or wireframes. I have even used a PowerPoint to, to make, to create these this, this, uh, mockups. Uh, how we create a web design, I will go faster. You can check here also very important in internet to have a website prepared for mobile. So you have to, to use a technology that can be uh, visualized in any type of, uh, of device, phones, tablets, or even PC. And Google has a very interesting tool. It's called Mobile Friendly Test that you can use to test your website and how you are performing in the mobile uh, visualization. Also another technology very important is the speed of your website. And when we talk about internationalization, it's very important to check how fast your website is, uh, is going when a user, for example, from Brazil or Latin America is uh, visiting your website. You have here, some links to, to make this, uh, this test of page speed, also for, for Google. And also uh, we can try to, to have a web accessible for many different type of people of people with disabilities. This is another, an, also another, another uh, important point to, to have a web prepared for for different type of, of people in with some problems of some disabilities. Okay. Uh, also, for example, for all the the things related to disability, we have a guru. It's called uh, from Nielsen Norman, Chris Norman. It's called this Jacob Nielsen. So is is one of the best uh, gurus experts in the world in the field of usability. And you have some ideas, primary ideas of what we have to do uh, regarding the usability of our, our web page. Usability, some fast idea, intuitive, fast loading, symbols, checkout process, internal, just some simple ideas. All of these things we, have, we are checking in the expanded digital program, okay? We make a check in the web implementation of the basic elements that a web should have to, to have a, a strong uh, internet presence, okay? Yeah, correct. <laughs> Thank you. And also uh, the use of content management systems as WordPress, uh, PrestaShop, Magento, Joomla, helps a lot in the creation uh, of an implementation of, of websites. Uh, a few years ago, we all the websites were created by uh, programming HTML code, but nowadays the, the content management systems 
as WordPress or other ones uh, helps us in the in this in this in this area. Okay. After we implement our strategies in a website, we have to make more things. We have to make actions. And the actions that we normally recommend to companies are classified in three in three uh, main areas. One area is search engine marketing or search engine optimization. We have to prepare our website for the search engines, for Google, for Yahoo, for other search engines uh, uh, companies. Or we can do publicity, we can do ads, what is called search engine marketing, whenever a user makes a, a search query. Whenever a user use Google, for example, to make a, a search, we can provide them with different type of ads. This is one field, one big area, search engine optimization of, or marketing. They are, they are the other big area in the action plan are social media. We can make actions in LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an excellent tool for making contacts in different countries and also for making B2B activities. But we can also use Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or other social media actions. Okay. And the third area where we are making some uh, actions is marketplaces, directories, or different external websites when we can carry out these activities. Okay, we have search engines, we have uh, social media, and we have uh, marketplaces and different web directories. Uh, you know, you have here different ways to appear in Google, search engine marketing, search engine optimizations, images, and shopping. There are also different type of search engines, Google, Yandex, Baidu, and also in China. China is a completely different world with different tools and different uh, approaches. And we have a, a guide, search engine optimization starter guide to begin in the world of uh, search engine optimization. From our point of view, many, many of the companies uh, receive the most, most of the visits from search engines. So we have to help the search engines to find the information in the website and also to, uh, to understand the information that we are publishing in our website. Have here this uh, link also with information about the CIO, the CIO strategies. Uh, we have in, I, will not go, I will not go in deep with the how to uh, develop a CIO strategy but you have this guide where you can find more, more detailed information. The second big area is uh, search engine marketing. You can develop or carry out uh, some ads in Google. Some, you, have, you have there some links to this information and also uh, social media. Uh, the idea, uh, when we talk about social media is that we have to develop a strategy for each country where we would like to work. So we have to develop a social media strategy for France, a social media strategy for uh, UK, and a social media strategy for uh, United States. This could be uh, very difficult for small companies to implement an international digital strategy. So at the beginning, we recommend to make it in English. Okay. Otherwise, the recommended strategy is to develop, to carry out a, a strategy for each country where we are going to work. Okay, you know, the most important, important social media networks, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and also in China, we have some specific uh, different platforms. Facebook, LinkedIn, and as I said, the international strategy in social media should be adapted for 
each country in particular. We cannot use the same strategy in Spain, in social media, for a country like France or a country like Poland. So again, internet is global, but the strategy has to be adapted to the country, local, local strategies. Uh, you know that all the platform has their own uh, promotion and ads uh, platforms. You can make ads in Instagram, in Facebook, and also you can make some actions in, in YouTube. Okay, I would like to, to, I'm going to be fast. You have this information in the presentation, also LinkedIn, that's very, very interesting, and China. Uh, I would like to go uh, directly to the, to the case studies and show how uh, different companies has applied this method methodology uh, to sell uh, abroad. For example, uh, Susi Kala, I know personally, it's a company from, from Valencia, is handcrafted uh, jewelry. Are they are specific focus in UK, okay? So they are selling directly to final customers and the tool that is uh, better performing for, for them is Instagram. So implementing a digital strategy, first a website, uh, an e-commerce website with uh, actions in social networks, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, for Susi Kala has completely changed the, the way they, they work. They have uh, engaged for more people, making the jewelry and also for commercialization activities. It's, it's an entrepreneur that started developing, developing uh, started making silver jewels. Uh, with this method, methodology and plan, they are currently selling in UK with as a second, I think it's the first, it's, I, I think they are selling even more in UK than, than, than in Spain. So this just uh, an idea of what they, they are doing. Uh, another uh, case study is called Carros de Foc. It's a company from, from Alicante. It's a cultural company that they are, how, how we, I can explain to you. They are making giant puppets. I'm, when I say giants, they are huge. And uh, they are making uh, spectacles and also street theater around the world. Okay, with this uh, methodology, they are using Instagram, YouTube, and other social networks to make them known in different countries. They have uh, make shows in China, in Poland, in France, in Brazil, in many different companies. We can think about the street theater or cultural activities uh, like uh, uh, just small companies or a few people that make some spect spectacles. No, no. This company is uh, specialized in giant shows. It's a small company also from, from Alicante. Uh, they are doing the things very, very well in the countries where they are, they are working. Okay, another company. Uh, this one, I, I like it very, very much. It's a um, staff world. It's also a website for creativity, for painting, for this type of products. Israel and, and his wife uh, lost their job in the in a bank. They were working in a, in a bank company, and they create this e-commerce. Okay, currently they are selling more than two million euros, selling uh, all the stuff, materials, uh, accessories, and tools for people that like the world of uh, creating uh, models and creating some special, special designs. Uh, they are using SEOSM and they are selling more than 30 countries around the world. They started from zero, 216, okay? A creative industry with a, a lot of, uh, with a very, very interesting, the way they are, they are doing the, the, the things. Okay, another one, uh, Raimundo from Valencia. They are, hand, they are crafting, they are producing handcrafted guitars in Spain, selling around the world, 
and we develop a special strategy for them to sell in United States. We have a warehouse in Miami. Are they selling their guitars in Florida? Uh, we have to, to think also in United States is very big. So we have to, to focus not just in the country, but even in a state. So Florida, the, also the legislation, the way to work is different from the from other, other part of the United States. So they focus on Florida because they have a base of customers bigger than in other, in other countries. And they started uh, making campaigns in Google, um, promoting activities and developing an international digital strategy for selling guitars in that, in that country. And finally, we have two, two more. Oh, I have the, the, the last one. Is Ruben Hell is a small agriculture company from, from Alicante, family-owned company that they, are, they have created a, a tying system. But what is, what is more, than most, uh, what, what is more important for, for them is the, the, the tape, the tape that they're using for uh, agriculture uh, activities. Uh, you know, uh, normally, uh, a few years ago, the, the people in the agricultural sector were using a lot of plastics for tying the, the, a different type of, of plants. Rohangel uh, has uh, decided to, to go green, to go sustainable, and they are using the biodegradable tapes in some of the of the products they are, they are selling. They are one of the most important uh, companies in Europe selling oxodegradable tapes. And as you see the YouTube channel of Rubangel, it's, it's, it's amazing uh, because uh, Ruben is the, the name of the, of the owner of the, of the company. In 2016, have decided that YouTube is going to be the main international digital channel to sell abroad. And if you see the channel on YouTube, you can see the number of reproductions. You can see also the contacts that they receive, B2B contacts from all around the world. Um, they have think and they have implement a digital international strategy that is, is, is paying the, and is also performing quite, quite well. Okay, so, uh, and I'll have a, another one, Milola from Barcelona selling uh, gluten-free uh, biscuits and bakery, and also a small entrepreneur that is using Amazon to sell, to sell abroad. Okay, so we have the detailed information of my contact details in LinkedIn. We can, you can feel free to contact me in, in LinkedIn. Uh, and also, uh, I think, I, I would like to confirm with Cynthia, they will send you the, the presentation without any problem. So from my side, you can receive the presentation and, and, and check uh, more carefully about all the things we have to talk, to, talk about. Okay, I think it could be, it has been interesting for all of you. And I think now Carmen is going to make some, some questions or Cynthia, I don't know. Uh, Thank you, Sergio. Yes, uh, yes, just to confirm, we will uh, forward the, the presentation to all the attendees. Yes, uh, I will give the floor to, to Carmen Ayllon. Uh, she's, um, let me show you her short video. Just, can you stop sharing the screen? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, so very interesting, Sergio. I think that it's, uh, it's relevant to, to highlight how the, the social media can also help a potential tool as, um, for the businesses. So as I was saying, my colleague, uh, Carmen Ayllon, she's a director of transnational projects at uh, Camara de Comercio de España. She has been working on foreign trade, European and international projects for more than 25 uh, years. And, um, especially on the design and oversight of SMEs uh, support projects and services, particularly on innovation, entrepreneurship, and internationalization. She has been also responsible for the global grant uh, in internationalization of uh, small medium enterprises in Spain, 
through the PIPE program and also the PIME program to support women entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurship. Um, you know, cameras, SMEs, innovation, greening math, uh, and several uh, other projects. So Carmen, you will be, um, you, you have the role of discussant. So I think that it will be interesting that you raise uh, the questions that you will think are more relevant for Sergio. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you to you also for your interest. Thank you, Sergio, for your presentation. I think that, uh, as Cynthia mentioned, investment program is focused on uh, supporting the growth of uh, sustainable SMEs and also creative industry SMEs coming from some Mediterranean countries. Investment is focused particularly in companies coming from Tunisia, uh, Egypt, and Lebanon. And uh, as uh, the, the rest of the partners, we also belong to the Mediterranean region of the European region. I think that we share many, many, well, uh, common issues, difficulties to start our internationalization process. So I would like, if you, if you want to, uh, meanwhile, our, the participants of the, of the seminar think of new questions. I would like, uh, if possible, to ask you three questions, Sergio. Uh, first of all, is that uh, since uh, the first question is related about, uh, well, the, the financial resources that usually uh, um, micro SMEs uh, use to, for the international digital uh, strategy. Uh, since many SMEs, most of them, but particularly micro companies, usually have scarce financial resources, I would like uh, you to, to explain to us if it is possible or if you have heard of cases of micro companies started only with CEO, SEO, uh, digital publicity, or if it is uh, well advisable, I mean, uh, or you give the advice to invest a little also of the same strategy, I mean, with the publicity that cost. The -hmm. second question is that, uh, well, in the case study you have uh, showed us, and I think they are very uh, eloquent, very illustrative because, well, well, we have seen very small companies. For instance, you have mentioned that one of them, Shusikala, focused on Instagram and uh, the other, Rivet Angel, preferred YouTube. Could you please explain to us whether they just chose finally the, the social network or the social uh, the, the, the internet system in which they should focus a priori or after measuring the, the, the results? And uh, finally, the final question is that since, well, for the, the people that we have working in internationalization for a lot of time, well, we started with the traditional international strategy, just let's say, I mean, the presence in trade fairs, international trade fairs, in Hanover, in Paris, in London. Uh, and uh, now companies have to combine or to use this digital internationalization strategy. From your point of view as an expert, is good to combine both or can a company growth with just the digital international strategy and just consolidate the presence in international markets, in new markets, combining both. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your, your question, Carmen. Uh, okay, so for, for the, first, the first question, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to say that we are collaborating with a very, very, uh, micro entrepreneurs and micro uh, companies, very, very, very small. But uh, at the end, we need to invest, okay? It's part of, essential part of any, any, any business plan. We are not talking uh, massive investments in, in publicity or ads or massive investments in creating some things, but uh, it's necessary we have to uh, consider a small budget to develop a digital uh, strategy. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to, to, to work, okay? But again, it's, it's even cheaper to work with digital tools that uh, make a traditional uh, 
uh, traditional actions like uh, making a, a fair trade or exhibition or making a promotion activity in one country. So for international country, the digital activities are cheaper and are also easier to implement than the traditional uh, actions that we know that we're using in, in international markets. Okay, but a small budget, but we need to, to invest. Okay, we need to invest in, in these type of things. I know I have some uh, cases in some companies that, okay, we are going to start with a presence. That I know one and one friend is going to make a website and then uh, we translate with some, mm, I would prefer to do the things in the in the best in the best way. In, in in this sense, you have the advantage, you know, Carmen, that with expand the digital program, there's a part of subvention. Okay, they are the the European Union and also the, the Spanish government is giving some uh, aid, some financial aid for this company to start uh, uh, this type of of activities, implementing these type of activities. In other countries, I, I know maybe it's, it's a little bit more, more complicated to get access to this type of financial uh, resources. Thank you. Okay, this is the first, the, the second the second one, uh, uh, about Susi Kala and also uh, Ruangel. Um, when we started with this methodology, uh, about thinking which is going to be the best a tool, the best, the best action for, for each type of company, for each product and for one country. Uh, after making this process of thinking and strategy process, we have a, make to a conclusion for Susicala that in the field of fashion, in the field of handcrafted, uh, the network that is the best one for promoting is Instagram. You know, you don't need to, to write, you don't need to have a, a, a skills in video, you, you just publish a, a photography and you share in, in social networks. So this is the tool that best fits to their needs. And also uh, in UK, the, the, main, the, mar the main objective market for, for them, Instagram is used uh, widely, is massively for many, many different uh, final, final customers. So this is what we think, uh, we make other things. For example, uh, Susicala is using also a website in English and also YouTube, but the main channel for uh, acquiring customers in this case is, is Instagram. The second, Rubangel, this is very, <laughs> very, uh, for, for me, it's very pleasing to, to, to explain this to, to you. Uh, Rubangel, when we, we met them, you know, we have a product that is very uh, addressed for people that works in the in in, in, a, in the agricultural sector. So for them to see uh, a people, a person working in the in the field and showing what is doing their product is very very valuable. We are not talking. Uh, this is why I say at the, in the, the presentation we have to make custom made uh, project for each company. Uh, for them, Facebook, Instagram have no sense. It's more focus of uh, fashion, consumer products, these type of things. But to show to uh, a, a to show to the people, for example, in Chile or in Peru, what the tools can do for them with a YouTube video is fantastic. It's very simple, it's very easy, but it's very effective. So for them, the main promotion channel, the main uh, activity is, uh, is, is YouTube uh, from, from, from the beginning. And you don't need, in this case, you don't need um, uh, uh, big investments. You just have to have a, a video, a camera, record what they are doing, record how it's working this tool, how it's working these machines. You uh, upload in, in YouTube and you have a presence uh, in, in the in the YouTube channels that can target different different countries, so this is for for them is clear clear YouTube and also for Susicala is, is clear the, the Instagram. But this came from a international a internal a strategy reflection. Have to think what is the best way, what is our product, which is the, the client, and which is the countries where we would like to to, uh, to address. 
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the the third the third questions. <laughs> Here I have some uh, some issues. Okay. We are we are uh, our expertise is uh, mainly in digital in digital uh, activities. Okay. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the presentation, for us it's uh, it's necessary or it's very very important that the company have a previous international uh, activity. Okay, if this company has a previous international activity, we can uh, make a international a standard international promotion activities and also digital activities. In, in the same way, and sometimes they, they complement one with, with, the, with the other. Okay, but uh, there are some cases of companies that they born digital. For example, a company like uh, Green Stuff World, you have seen here, that they just created an e-commerce. If we just born digital, there's no sense to uh, carry out or to consider traditional activities like exhibition fairs, or visits to different different countries. So in, the, in this case, the if you your business model is from the beginning digital, the the, the traditional actions they don't fit very well within the, the strategy. But for other countries, for example, in a business B two B model, is is very is very normal to uh, complement the traditional activities, the exhibitions, the visits, the with the digital activities. So both of them, they, they fit together very, very, very well. Many thanks. Thank you, uh, Sergio, for the for the for your answers and for the information. I think uh, they are very helpful to, to uh, all the SMEs, so the new entrepreneurs that are thinking of uh, getting international. Thank you I so a, much. I have a question here, uh, Carmen. Uh, have yes. In the chat, I, I will... I would like to yes, answer yes. Yes. study. Tell me about SEM is more effective as SSM. Oh, okay, it, it depends. Yes, it's advise me about SEM, whether it is more effective, more effective as social SSM. media uh, marketing. Yeah, social it, media. It depends, uh, study, okay? It, it, it depends. It depends on the product and also it depends on the type of client that you have. For example, uh, SEM, search engine marketing, uh, for us, it's working very well. We have a technical product where you have a, a specifically or different industrial product or, or machine or this type of product. Because whenever someone searches uh, in search in Google, for example, for a type of tying tool or, for example, for a blocking block making machines, the same activity, the same uh, publicity is is effective. For, for example, social media is more effective in other fields, in fashion, in cultural activities, in uh, consumer goods, in, uh, I don't know, for example, the, for wine, for cheese, for this type of, of product. So it depends. In what we do in Spanish Digital is we make, a, a, we think, and we decide what is the more effective action for this type of, of company. Okay. I don't know if maybe you want to more specifically about what company you have and try to explain, but in general, uh, it depends. It depends on which type of, of company we are, we are talking about. Thank you. Thanks, Sergio. Now we have, uh, what can the best, what can be the best channel for software reselling? Is it LinkedIn? Uh, Again, it depends, but uh, for us, the software sector is using LinkedIn as a main channel for promotion activities, okay? That could be clear, but if you have a specific uh, type of software product, maybe also the same, the search engine marketing activities in Google could also be interesting, okay? But normally the LinkedIn is a, a tool for software developing companies to, to promote their, their products, yeah. Thank you, thanks for your reply. And I don't think, I don't see other questions so far, Cynthia. I don't know whether. No, I think there, yes. Thank you, thank you for the comments. Um, I was uh, also thinking uh, regarding the, uh, what you were commenting, no, that the, the typical 
actions, the commercial actions are going to, to be disrupted as, at the same time. No, and the digital avoid you to travel so much, uh, but also to start, I was thinking about how to um, not lose the, the link and the bond with the culture that you are facing. No, I mean, finally the buyers, uh, if your product you want to, to, to incorporate it in another country, in another region, as for example, Asia or another, uh, it's, it's relevant also to understand properly the, the buyers, no? So in, the, in that sense, um, when you're making the, uh, I mean, of course, then appears new tools that you can use, no? To identify which are the needs and the, and the main uh, uh, gaps that your service or product can, can offer to them. Yeah. Thank you. If I may intervene also, I have uh, received another question. I copy in the chat uh, and mm -hmm. Molka uh, wrote it again. Yes. Do you think that putting our products in different marketplaces can damage the visibility of our own e-shop? Again, this time, I mean, if I don't have the, the the market, the product, and the client, it's very difficult to, to answer it in general. But again, in some cases, we are working what we call the multi-channel strategy. For us, it's not a problem to, to sell, for example, in, in Amazon, in the discount, um, different marketplaces that the at the same time. So if you are doing the things in the correct way, and you have a, 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 a strategy common for all the marketplaces, it should not be a problem to, to, to interfere in your, in, with your, with your ESO. As long as you do a strategy together, a multi-channel strategy, combining the different channels or different sales, sales channels. Thank you. Many thanks, Sergio. So I think if we don't have any further questions or comments, thank you, Molka, to you. Um, as we were saying, we will uh, share the, the slides and you have the, the contact of Sergio so that you can also address any other question and comment to him directly. Um, I was just uh, to thank you both, uh, Sergio and Carmen, to, uh, to be here. And uh, for the next seminar, uh, we are going to organize it by September. So just to uh, block and save the date, on the 9th of uh, September, we will be uh, talking about blue economy and also how to address and integrate uh, business models in that, in that sector. So I will uh, share with you in the chat the registration link so that you can, you can if you're interested on the topic, uh, don't lose that. Uh, thank you very much to all and uh, have a very nice day. You thank too, you, Cynthia. Thanks. Thank you to all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Many thanks.